Confessing, I am not enough. Lord, I am not enough. I can't do it. My best effort is but filthy rags. Unless you come. Unless you come. Unless you come. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that you're faithful to come. You're faithful to come. You're faithful to come. Well, when we gather together in your name, there you are in the midst. Lord, you're faithful to come. God, in those moments that were broken, in those moments that were empty, in those moments where there's no strength left, Lord, you're faithful to come. Would you meet us here again? Would you meet us here again? He's here to meet with us today. He's here. Lord, when you come so close, Would you come so close? Lord, you're our very breath. We just want you. We just want you. Oh, we just want you. Thank you, Lord, even as we wait on you. You renew our strength. We can face another day. Lord, we ask that you come so close. Come so close. Help us understand that you are here and you were there all along never have you forsaken us never have you abandoned us you were right there closer than our breath so Lord we lean on you today we lean on you I thank you that when we are weak you are strong oh you are strong we serve a mighty God a powerful God who's well able. He's well able. He's fully equipped to deliver on everything that he's promised. He is fully equipped. Never is our God short-handed. Never is our God lacking. Oh, he's the God of more than enough. Well, we come today to give you glory. We magnify you. We worship you. Have your way in our midst today. We praise you and give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Why don't you turn and look at somebody. Tell them they look really good today as you're seated. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. It's good to be in the house of God. God is a good God. He's a mighty God. Has he been good to you? So good. Yes, that's our God. He's mighty and powerful and worthy. It's an honor to 
stand here today, deliver the word of the Lord to you. I want to give honor where honors due. I want to honor our pastors, Pastor Mike and Pastor Becky. When we do that, give them some praise. I'm thankful for their leadership and their prayers and their encouragement in my life and uh, my family's lives. They're constantly asking and inquiring and praying, and, and uh, it, it means the world. You know, I relate it to as a when you're a child, you look at your parents and, and you can think that you know more than they do. You know, and then the older you get, the more you realize that th they may know a few things. And then when you become a parent, you realize just how incredibly brilliant rocket, rocket scientist-esque your parents were, just how smart they are. So I am, uh, as I've stepped into the role of, of leading a church, you guys look a whole lot smarter. Just keep getting smarter and smarter and smarter because <laughs> there's, there's so many things to, to deal with and do, but God is faithful. And uh, there was a, a man of God who told me years ago, there would be a day when all you do is preach. And uh, that word was intimidating to me when I heard it because those times that I was given to preach soon thereafter, it was difficult to, to come up with a word and Lord, what do you want to say to your people? Uh, but now everything that I do centers around trying to hear God for his people and preparing a word and, and there's no greater joy in life than doing what you were created to do. You know, and God in his, in his wisdom and in his unfathomable ways, he's got a purpose for each of us, a unique purpose, a unique design. He knew you before you were in your mother's womb knit you together. He says his thoughts are good towards you continuously. He's got a purpose and a plan for your life and a destiny and a unique assignment for you that nobody else can do. And that's pretty incredible that God would, would put all that together for each one of us. Lord, I just, I just thank you for the privilege to stand in your house today. Lord, I pray that as your word comes forth, that light would shine. Lord, the light of your word would shine in dark places. Lord, it would illuminate something. Lord, it would illuminate those areas that have been, have been dark and misunderstood. And Lord, you would just have your way. But as the word comes, they let it find good soil in our hearts and let us decide to be doers of the word and not hearers only. So we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. So God putting each of us together with this unique design and plan we have a powerful God. We really do. A powerful God, an all-knowing God. Think about that. He knows everything. He knows the thoughts that you think. That's a scary thing if somebody could know some of the thoughts that come across your minds. <laughs> he's, he's a faithful God. He's a merciful God. His mercy's new every morning. He's just. He's the giver of life. He's our healer, our provider, our sustainer. He's, he's lovely. He's glorious. He's powerful. He's everywhere at the same time. To, to quote the song, he's a, a miracle worker, a promise keeper, a light in the darkness. That's the God that we serve. And we can, I could keep going and going and going. But my question for you today is, who are you? Who are we as a people? Who, who are you? Well, God gives us an answer to that. In 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9, he says, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Can somebody give God some praise for that? A chosen generation. So you're here on the earth at a specific timeline that God orchestrated. 
Uh, it, God has your steps numbered, your days counted. You're a chosen generation. He's got you here on the earth right now for a specific reason. And I think it's because you're blessed. I think it's because he wants you to be a part of the, the miraculous thing that he's about to do in our world. There's about to be such an outpouring of the glory of God in ways that we've only dreamed about. He's got something planned for us that's beyond what we could even imagine. And we're part of that church chosen generation, a part of that timeline in history where, where God wanted us to be here to be a part of that. That's pretty awesome. He also says we're a royal priesthood, right? And, and as a part of the priesthood, basically what that means is you're one of God's employees. You're part of God, God Inc. You're one of, one of a, a God business. And as a part of the royal priesthood, your assignment is to do God's business, to do his work here on the earth, to reconcile people back to him, to, to show forth signs, wonders, and miracles. That's your assignment from God. The royal priesthood isn't just those who would come and speak to you from a pulpit. The priesthood is of all believers. It's all of us. We're all part of God's business. We have a God assignment that we need to fill. And he says he's called us out of darkness. Some of us were in some really dark places. Can I get somebody to agree with me? Were you in a dark place? You know, the, 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 the recesses of your mind, the places that you can go in your mind, the sin and the wickedness that, that some of us were involved in. He's called us out of darkness into light so that we could testify and share his glory and give him praise. How many of you know we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony? We need to be ready to share our testimony. Look what the Lord has done. I was going this way. My end was such that there was no hope. There was no way. The wages of my sin is death. But God showed up and he moved me out of darkness into his marvelous light so that I could give him praise and I could testify and I could share. Look what the Lord has done done. Has he been good to you? So he's called us out of darkness. He's made us a part of this royal priesthood to be in his business and, and to prepare us for that. We're going to look at Ephesians chapter 4 and specifically verse 11. But in verse 8, it says that God has given gifts to the body. So God gives us gifts to help prepare us to be a part of this royal priesthood, to, to be in the, the position that God has for you in his business. And Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, it says, And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. All right, so these are gifts. This is called the fivefold ministry. These are gifts that God's given the body. Merry Christmas. He's given us these gifts, um, and we're going to talk about what he's given these gifts for. But first off, these gifts are examples to us. They're examples that God's given us to help us know how we should live, to help us operate in such a way. Leadership is important because what leadership is, is influence on other people. If you're a leader and nobody's following you, then you're just out for a walk. But leadership is influence, that the things that you say and do affect other people's lives. And that's what God's called us to be, is to have influence, to have effect on other people. 1 Corinthians 11.1, 1, uh, Paul says, imitate me just as I imitate Christ. So God's given us these fivefold leadership in the, in the local church to be examples to us. And he's saying, follow me as I follow Christ. I talked a few moments ago about the, the, the opportunity and the blessing that God's given me to preach his word. And that brings such joy and, and fulfillment to me because it's what he's created me to do. But I've prayed. I said, Lord, if I preach your word and I lead your people the wrong way, take me out. Move me out of that position because in that position is great responsibilities because people's lives are there and they're looking to say, what are you saying? What are you doing? Because I want to follow that. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. And here's some of the things that Paul was saying, follow me through. 
2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7 through 10 says, We have this treasure in earthen vessels. So this treasure God's given us, he's, he's deposited it inside of us. He's put himself in us as we're the temple of the Holy Spirit. So God's living in us. We have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. I'm not enough unless he comes. So the treasure has nothing to do with me. I'm just the carrier of it. I'm the carrier. You and I are the carriers of the presence and the glory and the presence and the might of power of God. That treasure in us. So we're carrying that treasure. And he says in verse 8, we are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. How many of you have been hard pressed? You've been pressed hard? Feel like that, that aluminum can? You ever stomped an aluminum can to smash it down? Hard pressed, but not crushed. So we, we're feeling some pressure. We're feeling some, the roof caving in at times. But we're, we're hard pressed, but not crushed. And Paul's saying, follow me as, as I'm hard pressed, but not crushed. So you can look and say, man, those people that God's put in my life, man, they're going through it, but they're not crushed. They're keeping, they're keeping on. They're keep going. They're keep marching forward to the purpose that God has. Hard pressed, but not crushed. We're perplexed, but not in despair. How many of you have been perplexed? Not a word that we use every day, but I've been perplexed. You know, I, I think we're going through some things, and okay, this will all be over by the summertime, right? Summertime comes, and it's still going. Why? Why? I'm still perplexed, right? But we can be perplexed, meaning that we don't understand our natural mind blown, but not in despair. You know what? I can, I can be perplexed. I cannot understand it. As you may not understand it, but you know what? I'm not in despair because I know that my Lord liveth. I know that he's alive. I know that he's on the throne. I know that he's working. And in the midst of a situation where you, you are perplexed, you feel like this is never going to end and I'll get anything for this to be over. But I'm here to tell you today, as we step out of that situation, we're going to look back and say, man, that was rough. But look at what the Lord has done. Look at what he's done. Oh, I, I would do it all over again for what the Lord has done. They say that about moms giving birth to children. Like they, they have uh, amnesia. They don't remember the pain of the labor because if they did, they wouldn't do it again but when after they they go through the labor and that that special one is there the joy that fills them they're immediately you know soon not immediately but soon thereafter i'm willing to do it again perplexed but not in despair follow me as i follow christ in, in perplexed but not in despair verse 9 persecuted but not forsaken we can get persecuted but we serve one who is never going to forsake us. Struck down, but not destroyed. We get knocked off, but we get back up again. The righteous fall, but they get back up again. We've been struck down, but not destroyed. Verse 10, always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our body. So, Lord, you've given me this treasure. I carry this treasure. And whether I'm perplexed, whether I'm hard-pressed, whether I'm crushed, whether I'm knocked down, I'm going to get back up again because I have a treasure that I'm carrying. You've got a treasure that God's put inside of you. And others need to be able to uh, enjoy and, and drink from that well and get nutrients from that treasure that God's put in you. So he's given us these gifts. These are examples to us. Back to our main text, Ephesians chapter 4. Why is he given us these gifts? Verse 12 says, For the equipping or the perfecting of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So he didn't just give us gifts so that we could play with them. He's given us gifts for a purpose. And the gift, the purpose is, number one, perfecting. It, it's the Greek word katartis, which means complete furnishing, right? So think about the first apartment that you had, especially if you were a bachelor. And, and as a bachelor in that first apartment, you think, all I need is a sofa, a TV, and a bed, and I'm good to go. Right? That's all I need. That's the complete furnishings that I need. 
Thank God for, for a mom and for older sisters when that, the first apartment happened because there's a whole lot more furnishings that are needed than, than a bed, a couch, and a TV. Like I, a can opener would have never been on my list, right? But, but when you're getting that first apartment and you're in college or coming out of college, all you can afford to buy is SpaghettiOs and you're in, you're in tough luck without a can opener. But the perfecting there means the complete furnishings, Everything that you need to do what God's called you to do. And that's why he's given you these gifts. That's why you come to church. That's why you hear the word of God. That's why the word comes and challenges you. Because it's intended to furnish you with everything that you need. So you come to church not just to feel good. You come to church not just to hear a word. You come to church to be changed. To get something. So that when you walk out you can carry that treasure. And you're prepared to handle all that life's going to throw at you. Those perplexing situations. So he's perfecting the saints for the work of ministry. So work in the Hebrew is the word ergon, and it means to toil, act, deed, uh, doing labor. That's what work is, is, is labor. How many of you know it takes work to advance the kingdom of God? Amen. It takes work. It doesn't just happen by prayer alone. It takes work. It doesn't happen just by faith alone. We've got to mix these things together. Faith without works is dead, and works without faith is dead. They both need to work together. And so he's, he's furnishing, giving us all the tools, the equipment, the knives, the can openers, the, the dishes, the, the sofa, the bed, everything we need. He's furnishing us to do work, and, and says the, the work of ministry and ministry is a word, daikonia in the Greek. It means aid or relief or service. So he's equipping us to do work of service. And another definition for that word ministry is the word attendance. In order to do ministry, you've got to be present. You've got to be there to do ministry. There's no... Absentee ministry. Ministry, you've got to be present. We've got to be there. That's why it's so important that we gather together in the house of God. Hebrews says, don't forsake the assembling of ourselves together. And I understand the world that we're in right now, and some people watching me online today are in high-risk situations, and you've been told don't leave your house, and you're abiding by that, and that's good. But I'm telling you, there's other people that are three inches away from somebody at Walmart, but aren't coming to church where they could be 15 foot away from somebody. <laughs> to do ministry, we've got to be present. We've got to be there. We've got to show up in people's lives. We've got to show up in the church. We've got to show up and say, I'm available. I'm here. Use me, Lord. I'm available. Attendance is necessary for minister to ministry. You've got to show up. Some people, like I said, have legitimate reasons, but, but I'm talking to those that don't. We've got to show up. So God has given these, these five-fold ministry gifts, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, pastor, teacher, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, to strengthen us, to be an example to us, to help Help us build a strong, a strong, firm foundation to stand when things get difficult, when things get tough, because how many of you know they've gotten tough? Thank God for godly examples that we can look at and say, all right, I'm standing. I'm going to keep standing. Back to our text, Ephesians 4, chapter 4, verse 15 says, But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body... Joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causing the growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. So my question is, if you don't show up for the work of ministry, how does it get done? How does it happen if you don't show up? If you're not present, if you're not supplying, who's supplying? If you don't do it, how does it get done? 
every joint supply, building up the body. So if every joint's not supplying, the body's not getting built up. The body's making it. The body's enduring. We go through seasons and trials in our physical body. And during that time, when you're going through a physical trial, you're not exercising and, and getting stronger. You're just making it through. And, and we're intended, church, to be strong. We're intended to be built up. So I'm calling to the church today. Let's, let's step up because we need every joint to supply, every part doing its share. Some of us have bought into the lie that we're not essential. The word, when, when the pandemic first started, all non-essential employees. Well, as part of God, Inc., and God's business, every one of you are an essential employee. Everyone, because every part does its share. And if you're not doing your share, how's it getting done? It's not. Every part does its share. I shared at Impact Church last week the difference between being interested and being committed. Interesting is, is, is showing curiosity about something or someone. I'd like to check that out, see what's going on over there. Where committed is, is dedication and loyalty to a cause, activity, or job. Wholehearted dedication. There's a big difference between being interested and being committed. Unfortunately, a lot of the church in America is interested but not committed. When you're interested in doing something, you only do it when it's convenient. When you're committed to do something, you accept no excuses, just results. I'm here to tell you today that you can do anything that you decide that you're going to do. And you don't have to accept any excuses otherwise. In Luke chapter 10... Jesus sent out 70, and he sent them out two by two. In verse 1, it says, After these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also and sent them out two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. So he sent them out every place where he was about to go. How many of you know God sends us to places before he's about to show up there, before he's about to go there? Verse 2 says, then he said to them, the harvest is truly great, but the laborers are few. Again, I would ask you, church, if you're not laboring in the harvest, who is? The Lord says, therefore, pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. Go your way. Behold, I send you out as lambs among wolves. Verse, skip down to verse 9, and it says, And heal the sick there, and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. Down to verse 17, the, 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 the 70 went out. They did miraculous works for the kingdom of God. They healed the sick, cast out demons. In verse 17, they returned. It says, Then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Wow, this thing works. Wow, we do what you said and it happens. Mind blown. Verse 18, and he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Jesus is saying, hey, this isn't a big deal. This is what you're supposed to do. This is, you hear it, you do it. You hear it, you do it. You listen, you obey. Jesus is saying, don't, this, it's great, but the fact that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life, the fact that you're going to heaven is even greater than this. Verse 21, it says, in that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and revealed them to babes. Even so, Father, for it, it seemed good in your sight. So Jesus was, they came back and, and they shared what happened. Yeah, that's great, guys. There's so much more. Then he went over to God and said, yes, they got it. They're getting it. He re Jesus rejoiced because his people did what he called them to do. 
we, we can cause God to rejoice by doing what he's put us on this earth to do. This church, Life Source Church, is meant to be a sending station. You come here, the word, you get encouraged, you get filled up, and carry it out to your neighborhood and to your sphere of influence. If you're not influencing your sphere of influence, who is? It's been Pastor Mike's vision for years to have life houses all over this region. You know, COVID-19 had kind of caused that plan to, to multiply. Where, where life groups were formed and groups on Zoom were meeting. And we've had more participation in life groups this year than we've ever had before. And I, I just believe the thing that the enemy meant for evil, God turned it for good. And there's these groups that have formed, which is awesome. But God's looking to, to send us out, to have an impact in our communities. It's important that we come together, that we attend we be there for ministry. We get equipped. But then we go out and have an effect in our neighborhood and in our community. So I want to challenge you, church, those that, that you're part of this royal priesthood. You're saying, God's called me. He's given me a purpose. I, I, I need to share the goodness of God to come out to, to the church on Tuesday night. This Tuesday night at 7 o'clock, we're going to have a meeting for all those small group leaders and life house leaders and people that want to have an influence in their community. Want to be, be a lighthouse. How many of you know it's, it's dark right now in our world? And, but when, when you shine a light in the midst of darkness, it has great effect. During Thanksgiving, it was a great time. We were able to bless 50 families with, with Thanksgiving baskets. And thanks to your generosity and your faithfulness in giving, that's great. But my, my thought was, how many people could we have blessed if, if we had these lighthouses in communities reaching out to their neighbors? And you had five, and you had three, and you had seven people in your neighbor. We could have, we could have blessed hundreds of families. And that's the multiplier that, that can happen when we grab hold of, you know what? I'm a royal priesthood. God's called me, assigned me, equipped me, and it's now my time to have an effect on my neighborhood, on my world around me. The work that you do to serve is extremely important and it's valuable. I'm thankful for, for so many different humanitarian organizations that are active right now around our culture. Things like Toys for Tots that bless families you know, with, with toys that are needed. The military does that. And different government-based programs that provide people with food those are wonderful things, and, and, and they're, they're much needed. But I'm here to tell you today that, that our work is different than that. When, when we minister, provide those needs, we mix something with it that they might not mix with it, which is the Holy Spirit, which is the anointing of God. When the anointing of God gets on something, it has a supernatural effect to it. Isaiah chapter 61 is a scripture you've all heard before. It says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor, to share the good news, to share what God has done for you. He's called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted. There's a lot of people that have broken hearts right now, and we can speak a word of healing to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. There's a lot of people that are bound up in fear, bound up in worry, bound up in their homes, but the, the word says where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty and there's freedom, and you carry that presence with you. Verse 2, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of the vengeance of our God. To comfort all who mourn. He says we, he, he comforts those who mourn when we come to him. To console those who mourn in Zion. To give them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness. We can come in into the house of God carrying that spirit of heaviness, but, but when we begin to praise, we get to exchange that, that heavy weight with a garment of praise. That they may be called the trees of righteousness, the planning of the Lord, that he may be glorified. God calls you trees 
of righteousness, the, the planting of the Lord. And a tree doesn't go around moving very much. Trees are, are planted firm and deep in the soil, and, and they weather some seasons. You know, trees go through it. Hurricanes, tornadoes come, and most trees are just standing right there. And you know, when, when a tree's roots grow down underground, that's what holds them stable. The, the branches line up with the roots. So when a, a root goes out this far, there's a branch that goes out this far. When a root goes out this far, there's a branch that goes out this far. So there's a lot going on with people under the surface that you might not necessarily see. But they're getting stronger and getting strengthened. And then the branches begin to grow. He said, we're trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. He's planted us. And then as a tree begins to grow, it begins to bear fruit. How many of you know a tree would be of no good if, if nobody could eat of its fruit? So the fruit that, that bears in your life is for other people to grab hold of and say, that's a good fruit right there. That, that's nutrients that I need. That's hope that I need. That's what God has called us to be because he's anointed us. And I want to do something here today. When we had our, our launching commissioning service in August, Pastor Mike gave us this anointing oil. And, and this was to remind us, as the word says, it's not by might or by power but it's by his spirit. It's by his anointing that, that we can declare his word, that we can do his work. It's all by his anointing, not by our own effort. And uh, so every service before I minister, I take this oil and I anoint myself with it because, Lord, I want, I want to be a vessel that you work through. And like I shared earlier, Lord, if I lead your people the wrong way, take me out. Remove me. So this oil's almost gone. We've used a lot of it. Because I've anointed myself a lot of times, but also like about half of it spilt in my bag, <laughs> carried around with me. So this is an anointed bag right here, right? So I walk down the street. There's people getting healed, passing out in the Holy Ghost, delivered. And I don't even know why. Just look at the, to see the trail because the anointing. But you, we carry that anointing on us and in us when we consume ourselves in the presence of God. If you don't show up, who does? If you don't do the work of ministry, who does? All oh, the pastors will do it. Well, it's the pastor's job to equip you. It's not their job to do it. And I don't know about you, but I got enough struggle just trying to do what God's called me to do. Picking up your share will be a little bit of a problem for me. So as the worship team comes today, I want to do something special I want to anoint each of you. I want to anoint your hands. Because God's called you, and he wants to anoint you fresh today to do the work of ministry, to do what God's called you to do. It's not by might or by power, but it's by your spirit. It's his spirit that does this. So if you'd stand up on your feet with me, the ushers will help me, but, but how we'll do this is we'll start in this section over here. And all I'm going to ask you to do is just walk right in front of me, and I'm going to anoint your hands. Because God has a special assignment and purpose for you. And again, it's not by anything you can do in your own strength. It's by his anointing. Thank you, Jesus. So I declare a fresh touch yes, in the name Lord. of Jesus. Fresh anointing in the name of Jesus. Lord, a fresh touch today. A fresh anointing, Lord, to do what you've called him to do. It's not by might or by power, but it's by your spirit, Lord. So a fresh supernatural touch. A fresh anointing today. Lord, to show up. Lord, to do what you've called them to do. It's not by might or by power, but it's by your spirit, says the Lord. Lord, a fresh anointing today. A fresh supernatural touch. Lord, anointing today. Anoint her. Lord God, I thank you. Oh, set them apart. Lord, set them apart to do what you've called them to do. Lord, a fresh touch in the name of Jesus. A fresh anointing. Fresh anointing in the name of Jesus. Oh, it's not just oil. It represents all your Holy Spirit oil. All your Holy Spirit anointing. Fresh touch today. Fresh touch in the name of Jesus. Oh, consume. Oh, consume with your purposes. Oh, an essential, an essential, an essential. Lord, for the work. Oh, for the body to be strengthened. For the body to be edified. Oh, fresh touch.
touch in the name of Jesus. Oh, a fresh supernatural touch. Oh, Lord God, show up in your power. Show up, Lord God. Oh, a fresh anointing, Lord Jesus. Oh, this is the day that you made, Lord. We rejoice and are glad in it. Lord, a fresh touch in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, a fresh, a fresh, a fresh. Lord, a God assignment, a specific purpose that you created her for. Oh, a fresh. Oh, let her sense and be aware of your presence everywhere that she goes, everything that she does. Lord, fill her mouth, fill her mouth with your word. Fill her mouth with your word. Oh, to be present, oh, to be present, to be willing, God, to do that which you've called us to do. Lord, is the greatest in the kingdom is to serve it. Lord, we thank you today. Fresh touch, fresh touch in the name of Jesus. A fresh touch in the name of Jesus. A fresh touch today. Fresh, Lord God. A fresh, a fresh, fresh, Lord, double portion in the name of Jesus. Go oh, fresh, 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 fresh touch, Lord God. A fresh touch, Lord Jesus. A fresh touch in the name of Jesus. A fresh touch today, oh God. A fresh touch in the name of Jesus. Lord, a fresh touch today, oh God. Oh, 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 I give my 
the Lord. Aren't you grateful for that word today? Amen. God wants to use us. Now, I, you know, every message that is preached, in my opinion, when I hear it, or I'm preaching it myself, I think deserves a response. What is it that God's asking me to do? So if we're not intentional about this word, we have just gotten our hands a little oily. That's it. But I believe that God wants to use us. And not just in a generic way. I believe, and we're going to pray just now, that God wants to use us this week. Whether it's online, encouraging somebody, somebody we work with, somebody we come across, whatever the case may be, God wants to intersect our lives with a point of need in somebody else's life. He wants to speak through us. He wants to minister through us, pray through us, touch through us, encourage through us, whatever the case may be. So what I want you to do is the hand that was anointed, would you lift that to the Lord right now? Father, we just ask you to use us for your glory and honor. We pray, God, that we would be sensitive to the Holy Spirit of the living God this week. The people we engage in conversation, the people we casually come across online in our social media platforms, the people we walk by. God, that you'll make us sensitive. Help us to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And God, use us this week to be a minister, a minister, a minister of your peace, your love, your righteousness. God, thank you that you're going to do that. Give us the words to speak, the prayers to pray, and we give you all the glory and honor right now for it in Jesus holy name and let everybody say amen amen come on give the Lord praise today now be sensitive to the Holy Spirit this week as to what places are places of ministry for you okay for God's glory you can go ahead and be seated those of you watching at home we want to encourage everybody today we want to give you an opportunity to worship the Lord in your giving and there are different ways to do that. Those of you who attended here in, in person today, hopefully when you walked in the door out in the lobby, there's a table that has giving envelopes there. Uh, you can just place your tithes and offerings in those envelopes and on your way out, there are giving receptacles at the very back of the sanctuary and also at the balcony main exits. Those of you watching online, there are different ways for you to give online. You can do, download our church app that has lots of information about what's happening at Life Source. That we also utilize that for sign-ups, sign-up forms, different things that we use that for. It's a great tool. You can download it, give there. You can give online, lifesourcechurches.com. You can give using uh, text to give. I'm going to do it right now because I'll show you how simple it is, right? So you just pull up a text, a new text, and you type in the numbers 84321. Okay, select that, and then like you would text somebody a message, hey, how's it going today, or whatever you would do, you just type in the amount you wanna give. Don't have to put any decimal points and add any cents unless you want to. Round it off, you just put that in there, hit send, bingo, done, okay? The first time you do that, it'll give you some prompts, but after that, now I just got a text back. Thank you, you gave dot, 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 a recent, a uh, receipt will be emailed shortly, okay? And let's say you made a mistake. Let's say you typed in 500, but you meant to type in 50,000. You go, oh, I made a mistake. Then you have the option text refund to refund, okay? So if you make a mistake typing in, how many of you make mistakes typing, right? 
Sometimes that happens. Those of you online, you make a mistake. You know what the bad thing is when you hit the send and you reread it and you go, I can't believe I just sent that to so-and-so, right? Sometimes spell correct isn't correct. It's really bad. Uh, so anyway, that's an easy way to do it. And then lastly, if you wanna mail in your giving, people still do that as well. You can just mail it in to Life Source, 7000 Rossville Boulevard, Baltimore, Maryland, 21237. Now, in just a moment, we are going to do our declarations as we end the service. A positive confession out of our lips. So those of you in this house today, stay put for just a second as we do that. Those of you online today also, watch the screens. We're gonna just share a quick, quick announcement with you, then we'll close together. It's time to close the book on 2020. Party with us on Thursday, December 31st at 10 p.m. as we celebrate New Year's Eve Life Source style. This will be a great night of pre-service fun, powerful worship, a vision-filled message, and to top it all off, a grand countdown to 2021. You will not want to miss this event and to continue following CDC safety guidelines, seating will be limited. To reserve your ticket, go to lifesourcechurches.com or the LS app and click on the events tab. You can also text the word NYE to 410-391-8000. Let's end the year right by giving thanks to God for all that he has brought us through in 2020 and we can't wait to see you there. Whether it's your first time here or you've been coming for a while, we'd love for you to call LifeSource Church Home and become a member. LifeTrack is a great way to do that. LifeTrack is a three-week program starting the first Sunday of every month and our first cycle will begin Sunday, January 3rd. This is where you can learn more about LifeSource and our core beliefs and values. Classes start at 10 a.m. and are located in the LifeTrack classroom next to the elevator on the lower level. And don't worry, these classes will let out before second service begins so you won't miss a thing. You can sign up at LifeSourceChurches.com, the Ellis app, or stop by the Connect station in the lobby. And you know, for those of you wondering now, what could I do this week though? We have virtual Bible studies, life groups online. Uh, I record a Bible study typically uh, every single week. This week is in the book of Micah, the Old Testament. So you can again go online, lifesourcechurches.com, our app. You can just get into one of our groups. We have hundreds of people every week during the week that are connecting online in Bible studies. So make sure that you do that this week, okay? It's great. Stand with me. Those of you at home, stand up, get on your feet. Get out of that bed. Get out of that bed. Get up and let's do our declaration together. Before we do that, listen, one practical way that God can use you this week is sharing this service on your social media platforms. We do the entire service, the praise and worship, all of it together, the message, the word. Listen, people need hope, right? So share, share, share it like crazy. You can be an evangelist online in Jesus name raise your hand toward heaven say this after me I am saved that little voice was the most excited voice in the whole group here if you're really excited about seeing being saved I need you to add that to your confession are you ready say I am saved I am healed I am free I have authority. Change is here. And God is on my side. In Jesus' holy name, amen. God bless you and have an awesome week.